with the rogue deck. I believe those should be flipped. Swap them yes. over. I think yeah. that's yeah. the wrong way around. There we go. Swap the names. It's actually, the lineups are correct. It's actually Bozo's Quest Rogue yeah. that has been banned and Zixo's Even Warlock, which makes sense. You know, Quest Rogue, as polarizing a deck as it is, obviously strong against Zixo's lineup. Yeah, I think from uh, Bozo, if he had brought the Malagos Druid rather than the Token Druid, we might have seen a different ban other okay. than the Even Warlock. But because Even Warlock obviously has cards like Defile, Hellfire, Dread Infernal, very strong against the Token Druid list from Bozo, and yeah. therefore Bozo is getting rid of the Even Warlock from Zixo. Yeah, yeah. Again, a little bit confused. I was about to correct you there, the realized <laughs> yeah. you were right. The <laughs> there we go, it's there changed we go. over. There we go, okay. Perfect. Now everything in order. Bozo's Rogue has been banned away. That is the Quest Rogue. Zixo's Even Warlock is banned away. So that leaves the Hunter Paladin and Druid for Bozo. And Zixo with the Hunter Shutterwalk Shaman and his Malagos Druid token and Even Paladin for Bozo. The Hunters are both Death Rattle Hunters. So now, looking at these lineups, oh, you're gonna ask how are question, you seeing... You? I'm going to ask Derek. How I think it's part of the reason. It's just a fun <laughs> name to write. Zixo is a pretty fun name, too. Yeah. It's just an old name. Back in 2015, maybe. Right, right. It's going to be the Token <laughs> Druid versus the Death Rattle Hunter up first. Now, this is, in my opinion, the least bad of the Druid matchups against the Death Rattle Hunter, right? Because, like... You mean you like the Token Druid against the Death Rattle Hunter? Yes. Yeah. A lot more than I like Malagos Druid or Togwaggle Druid okay. against Death Rattle Hunter anyway. I can see that. I, I definitely agree Togwaggle Druid is the worst against Death Rattle Hunter. That is a pretty abysmal right. matchup. Malagos Druid and Token Druid, I think, both have a really good shot because they can both get to their explosive win condition very quickly. Uh, Token Druid can definitely get there the fastest because yeah. you can just go Whispering Woods on turn four uh, and then double Savage Roar and finish out the game in the next couple turns. Obviously, that's very hopeful and probably won't happen, especially when Zixo has got a pretty spicy-looking hand there on the Hunter with Mind Control Tech, Shaw, and the uh, the Mossy Horror, which we've seen kind of exiting the meta a little bit recently. All very powerful cards in this matchup. Pretty good here, isn't it? Uh, it's a pretty slow start for both players otherwise, though. It's, it's looking a little bit like Bozo is going to get that Whispering Woods onto the board. And Zixo's not going to be able to do much about it immediately. Whether Bozo will have time to follow that up with his Savage Roll with his branching paths or not is yet to be seen. Right. And that's the, the distinguishing factor in this matchup is, yes, you can get down the Whispering Woods early on. Can you do something with that to win the game? Because 6 one ones is good, but it's not game-winningly good unless you get down Savage Roll or branching paths or Soul of the Forest, which Bozo has a good deal of to be able to get buffing those 1-1s one -one straight away. But even then, I think unless he can get off to a very powerful start indeed, Zixo is still looking to be in a pretty good spot here. Because I think how this game likely pans out, as it quite often does when the Hunter has a good response, is Bozo will go for an early offensive with the Whispering Woods. Mm -hmm. It won't pan out because there will be um, the Mind Control Tech, Harrow Master Shaw, Coin Mossy Horror, whatever right, Zixo right, wants right. to clean it up. Then it goes late game. Bozo can very much pull it back from that spot with Nourish into Ultimate Infestation as a very good backup plan. Yep, gonna coin out that Harrow Master Shaw immediately. Uh, as you were saying, it's just it's just an incredibly strong start. No matter what Bozo puts on the board here, he can't deal with that Houndmaster, sure. And therefore, Zixo's going to be able to just rush in all of his minions any which way he pleases. Hmm, I wonder. Bozo looking like he's just going to slam that Whispering Wood, but it, exactly as you said before, Mind Control Tech. Plus the shore is just... Oh, and candle shot drawn off the top as well. That's just everything Zixo could possibly want this turn. And Zixo played for this. This didn't just fall into his lap. By going for coin into Houndmaster Shore, it very much stopped the Mossy Horror possibility. But he realized, if Whispering Woods comes down now, I completely destroy his board. Even without the candle shot off the top, there would only have been two Wisps left, which just don't do anything. You can very much survive against that. Um, which forces Bozo to go for some kind of a late game plan, ramping up into Ultimate Infestation, which thankfully for him, he what? does have access to. Gonna be a little bit of a struggle in the meantime, though. As you say, Bozo, sure, sure, he can nourish. He can even spell stone away the mind control tag. Yeah. 
But that's it. That sure is not going anywhere. And I guess it's not as big a deal when Bozo's board is empty, but he's going to need to deal with it sometime. So I wonder if his plan therefore becomes ramp with Nourish now, and then you can hero power. Uh, you don't use the Spellstone, and you save it for Malfurion hero power. Oh, sorry, Malfurion Spellstone on turn on eight mana to deal with the Shaw. Uh, because you really do want to make sure you've dealt with that at some point in this game, because if that's still on the board by the time Katharina or Rexar comes down, the game is pretty much just over. Right. Interesting, though. Bozo instead looks like he's going for the, uh, the double trade into the mind control tech, which... ...obviously has its merits. You can see why he's going for that. It clears off three power on the board, whereas otherwise he would be taking a lot of damage. Whereas now, I suppose his... Oh, no, sorry, the, the hero power upgraded the Spellstone. Okay, sorry, my mistake. So now he can go for the six damage Spellstone onto Malfurion. So this works out perfectly. The perfect amount of hero powers beforehand uh, to get the Spellstone upgraded twice. So Zixo really trying to work out between the Witchwood Grizzly and the Zilliax here, which one is going to be more important. I think against Token Druid that don't usually empty their hand. Witchwood Grizzly is it's kind of weak, unless you can follow it up with a cube and then activate the cube immediately. Yeah. Personally, I like the look of Zilliax a little bit more. Wow, he's going to go with the Grizzly. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's a very difficult decision. But if you think to, to uh, in my, uh, what I draw from here is Taunt Druid against Token Druid, which is not a bad matchup because you have so many big taunts. They just can't get through all of them. Right. And while you obviously don't have it to the same degree in Death Rattle Hunter because you don't have Hadronox, you can still get a very decent amount of taunts with uh, the Witchwood Grizzly into the queue. And I think his hand is doing enough already. Like, he's clearing off the board pretty much every time. So I like the Witchwood Grizzly for a strong follow-up, maybe going for the turn before Ultimate Infestation, and he fills up his hand. Everything Bozo seems to do this game is falling short, though, as he's now played the Spiders into a potential Rexar turn, and down comes the Rexar dealing with those Spiders. Mossy Horror can be saved until later for a Spreading Plague. Things are looking pretty good for Zixo right now. That's true, but this is a, a pretty big committal of resources from Zixo. You never want to be using your uh, Deathstalker Rexar in this matchup unless you are killing a whole lot of stuff while you are doing it. And so for, uh, for Bozo here, he's kind of baiting out the Deathstalker Rexar, if you will, by using it, just kind of trading Death Knight here, uh, battle cries. That's perfectly good for him, I think, to maybe, after the ultimate infestation, go for Spreading Plague into uh, Soul of the Forest or Whispering Woods now, just to try and get a nice big board going as soon as possible. Because he's just seen the Deathstalker Rexar, so what punish could there be other than a Mossy Horror from Zixo to be able to deal with everything? <laughs> there it is, there's the Mossy Horror, so... <laughs> Which means, which means for Bozo, he will have uh, all, pretty much all of the effective board clears used up. Mossy and Rexar is it, I think, in terms of wide board sweeps. Outside right. of that, you have to rely on Houndmaster Shaw for Rush, which has also gone. Which means the only plan now is defensive options. You have to go uh, Grizzly into Cube Playdead. To be fair, there are many different Builder Beasts that Zixo could come up That's with. That's true. I mean, how effective do you think that hero power is in this matchup? Oh, it, it's crazy because it has the ability to give you effectively infinite value, whereas Token Druid is quite a low value deck. So all you really need it for uh, is to survive, get you that little bit extra. Maybe you can get another big uh, defensive beast like a Witchwood Grizzly. If you can get yourself a bloat that in the absolute best case scenario, you are absolutely over the moon. Still here for Zixo, just having to go for the most defensive option, which is to lock down the board, try and pressure Bozo out of the game as quickly as possible, which obviously, however, has the pretty obvious downside of going into spreading plague into Soul of the Forest, which has to be what Bozo is looking to move yep. towards as quickly as he can. That's going to be his big comeback now, isn't it? Now that Mossy Horror's gone, now that Rexar's been played, in theory, there shouldn't be a way of clearing that board again. 
hiding the soul of the forest behind a spreading plague and then buffing up all of the tokens for lethal later on. His violet teacher now comes down. Bows are going to try and make as many tokens as he can. Getting wild growth into excess mana into the second wild growth. Wow. Yeah, I wonder now if he will go for his one copy of Solo Forest that he has in hand, thinking that is his big gambit. I like this play. The wild growth into the excess mana, into the power of the wild, just creating the biggest, bulkiest board okay. he can immediately. Because what response is there to this? Houndmaster sure isn't there. And if you kill off the, uh, well, very astutely killing off the Charged Devil Saw as well, there's no cube play dead possibility to kill off yet more minions on that same turn. That King Crush isn't looking like it's doing all that much at the moment. Zixo needs to clear up this board as much as he can immediately. Maybe a Builder Beast into some sort of Bloat Bat, which he can then play dead to deal with. Maybe that's his only way of clearing up this board at this point. With, with two copies of Branching Paths and Savage Raw in Bozo's hand, Bozo is setting up just to win the game soon. And this is what I was talking about. Zixo doesn't worry about value. He cares about dying because this is what yep. Token Druid does so well. Its value is incredibly low, but it's the, the density of threats. It makes Ow. big boards in such a small amount of time that you have to have wide board AoE to be able to deal with it. And Zixo no longer has that. Maybe we should have seen him holding back on the Deathstalker Rexar for a turn longer against those spiders. Um, oh. Obviously, then you run into all kinds of other complications. With the Innovate, is that lethal? We, we can now double Branching Paths and Savage Raw. I no, it's not. I believe it's two off. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Two, that's what I'm yeah, counting yeah. as well, because you can't hear a power with that. Yeah. So, wow, 28 Which damage. <laughs> very <laughs> close. Bows, right? You just yeah. go for it, don't you? So what do you do? If you get them down to two, you you're swipe. never dying on the following turn, even if they go cube if they go cube, play dead, play dead uh, on the King Crush, you are then but, dead, which is the punish, I suppose. But at this point, Bozo's got to weigh up the odds, right? Like, yeah, does, does, yeah. He, does he play around exactly cube, play dead, play dead? I guess he'd also have to play, think about playing around any heal, any life steal from the yeah. Builder Beast. That would be a problem. Yeah, yeah. But and I suppose the, the, the question then is, is he far enough ahead to play around stuff like that? He's not sure. He he honestly can't make his mind up. And so he's going for the play here of playing around cube as effectively as possible. And I think there were there were two main ways to play around cube. One of which was to clear up all the good minions, which is what he has opted for. The other method, which I think I agree with you, was slightly better, was just to push all the damage yep. to phase and set up for ultimate infestation lethal because then the only way they survive is killing you, which maybe they could do, or more likely, they have to go for a big Katharina into Witchwood Grizzly play. Which Zixo does now have. Yeah, I believe that the Witchwood Grizzly is the only beast left in Zixo's deck. I think you're right, yeah. Savannah Hymane seems to have uh, met the axe in Death Rattle Hunter nowadays. It comes and goes. Yeah. Charged Devil Saw has uh, yeah. claimed a more consistent spot, though. There you go. The nice little three. Oh, sorry. I was going to say 312. 413. The minion. Thank you for that, Keliseth, that just got played. And so now the amount of damage that can be pushed through for Bozo is quite substantially less. Now imagine if he had played both Branching Paths and Savage Ruin last turn. What may, yeah. what may have happened here? Well, it's not what may have happened here. It's what Bozo is thinking right. may have happened right, right. from Zixo's mystery cards that he can't see. Yep. He's thinking maybe he rolls healing on a Zombiest while also playing yep. Big Torn. Uh, maybe he gets Bloat Bat plus Lifesteal. But I think oh. this is the mark of a slightly less experienced player is they play around stuff 
too much. Yeah. They are too afraid of what could possibly go wrong. Whereas I think what happens the vast majority of the time there, if you had pushed face, like you were saying, is you just win on the following turn because they can't heal oh, and okay. taunt all on yeah. the same and th turn. And that's the difficulty is weighing up the odds, working out exactly what you're playing around and to what extent you should actually yeah. be playing around it. Zixo, on the other side of things, he spent this whole game wishing he had a cube in his hand. He'd love to yeah. cube this Witchwood Grizzly or have cubed the, um, the King Crush last turn. Tangled web. But he just hasn't had that tool available to him. But because Bozo has been playing around it, he's been able to capitalize regardless. And the way that Bozo has been playing indicates very much so that he will want to kill off this Witchwood Grizzly above everything else because he's been playing around Cube plus Death Rattle Activator very, very aggressively. But now, because he's already used the Soul of the Forest on that last turn, instead of pushing that damage through to face, it means he can't now go for a Spreading Plague plus Soul of the Forest as the big one-two punch. And he's left with what is a pretty measly board and a fairly measly hand as well. Zixo, knowing that Spreading Plague hasn't been played yet, just doesn't need to go wide. He can just trade in these the two two-twos, go face with Katharina. Maybe play a big beast if he gets one. That, that's about it. Like he doesn't need to extend further onto the board. <laughs> As he has clearly been talking to Gala <laughs> here in the venue <laughs> yeah. uh, with King Markler uh, available, even when not put naturally into the deck. And I agree, it's probably the way to go. Best stats. Oh. Healing doesn't matter all too much yet. But when you get the vicious oh, scale, scale hide as well. Every time, oh yeah. my god. Because it means he doesn't even need to play oh. it right now if he doesn't want to. He can just wait and then rush it into something later. Yeah. But if, oh man, if that sticks and he draws a cube, he would then have six, eight rush lifesteal <laughs> able to come down. I, I actually really like this play from Zix, so just trading in the, the weak stun, putting up the Witch with Grizzly because it's there as a taunt. This doesn't play into Spreading Plague at all. There really isn't much Bozo can do here. I believe both Whispering Woods have been played already. Yes, uh, they have both Whispering Woods, one Soul of the Forest, uh, I believe has been played. And a Violet Teacher, even. So. Yeah. Bozo's resources are incredibly limited now. Very little generation available. And the Spreading Plague doesn't do all that oh, much tangled. anymore. Well. Uh, so maybe it's going to have to be... <laughs> Ultimate infestation yeah. on, the, on the Witchwood Grizzly? UI, the, both Spellstones have been played as well, I believe. So UI uh, innovate into Spellstone to kill off the Grizzly to play around a cube isn't a possibility. It just, it just brings me back to that turn where he could have dealt the 28 damage. He had a UI in his hand, he had a swipe in his hand. We didn't know this, but he was about to draw his second swipe. Yeah. Like, Bozo would have most likely, I, I don't want to say would have, because then Zixo would have built a beast. Maybe he'd have got this ridiculous King Mookla life steal, and maybe he still would have won. But that was definitely Bozo's best shot this game. But I, I think the, the, the key aspect of the play we're discussing of going all in on aggression there is even if your board is cleared up, you still then have, um, and they, if Zixo was able to dominate the board, you still have Spreading Plague into yep. Soul of the Forest. You still have follow-up afterwards. Yep. And I think that's how you generally have to play Token Druid, is you, you have to do... It, it's like it's a combo deck. Oh. You don't kill your opponent in one OTK, but your cards have to work together well, yeah. or they are just very understated cards. They don't do enough. What do you want here, Derek? Do you want the uh, spreading blade clay, spreading play killer in the mastiff plus the uh, the bear, or do you just want this big bear, shark, tiger, beast thing, nine eight stealth? Huh. I can respect this. It doesn't quite set up lethal, but it's uh, very aggressive, and it means that Bozo has to play on the defensive. I think. And this is what we're seeing. He's drawn through his whole deck, but there is no ultimate win condition, yes. like in Malagos or Togwaggle. You have to do stuff along the way very powerfully to get there. Is there something he could do with Scenarius, maybe? I'm really not seeing it. Yeah, especially with uh, <laughs> the old Muckler ready to come down, mill a card from Bozo, as well as just completely destroying the board and mill. putting Zixo in a pretty good uh, situation. Mill the last card yeah. from Bozo. which is another plague, I think. I'll give you one British pound sterling. I think it is the second spreading guess. plague, actually. I yeah. think you're right. No. 
And yeah, just carrying on here for Zixo with the game plan he's been going for throughout the entire game, clearing off when he can, uh, not going too wide into spreading plague. Do I have to give you one British pound now? No, it cancels out. Ah. That's how economy works. Okay. Yeah. So, Bozo, you have a handful of things. <laughs> you just can't really do much with them. I, even having had to use one of the Savage Rolls earlier means that yep. he, it's not possible for him to have one turn where he plays two Savage Rolls and one Branching Pass. He used the Innovate earlier as well, so he can't do the other way around. Like, there's, there's really nothing he can do here. He, he has to spreading Plague and Hope, but honestly, I'm not sure what he's hoping for. But this is just what it's like playing against a pro player like Zixo. It's like yep. going up against a brick wall. There's no room for mistakes or alternate lines that are not the the quote-unquote correct way to go about it right because they will just play correctly they will clear up your board every turn and you will be left with no recourse to take the game back and again this you know the token druid is a very difficult deck to play and it's a deck that i find leaves itself very open to styles of play playing it differently like whether you go all in you're a very risky player like we saw bozo throwing out the witch uh, the whispering woods right at the start turn four and then again a couple turns later just throwing out another whispering woods obviously they were dealt with um through houndmaster shore uh, the mossy horror as well it did not work out for him and i think a lot of players would have said he should have waited a little bit more and gone for the combo of whispering wood soul of the forest or plague soul of the forest a little bit sooner it can't, it can't be fun, though, can it? Like, you know, you, you've come to a dream hack. You're not that well known. I, I'm saying that simply because us as casters didn't know who Bozo was. I hope that, that I'm not doing him an injustice there. Like, your first opponent, you match up against Zixo. Maybe one of the more intimidating members of the Hearthstone scene. Zixo is incredibly intimidating. He I have been lifted up on his shoulders before. <laughs> you have been lifted yes, up on his shoulders. I know. Big old tall fat Derek has been lifted up on Zixo's shoulders. He is surprisingly strong. <laughs> and very tall himself. Which one of you is taller? Zixo. He's the only Hearthstone player who's taller than me. It's very disappointing. I'm sure glad I don't have to cast with him. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> As he takes the first game. There you go. That is Zixo's Death Rattle Hunter claiming its win. That leaves him with Shadowak Shaman and Malagos. Sorry, it's not Conquest. Yes. It's last year standing. Let's reverse that. He's going to continue to play his Death Rattle Hunter. And that leaves his opponent with even power than the Death Rattle Hunter. And that is a big win uh, for Zixo there. The token druid for Bozo. I believe he started with what was his sweeper deck, which is a, a common strategy in last hero standing where he was thinking, if I can win the first match with uh, Token Druid, Token Druid against Maligos Druid, really not that bad of a matchup. You can very often get an unwinnable uh, a board state that cannot be dealt with right at the start of the game. And against Shadowwalk Shaman, which uh, pretty much unanimously runs Keleseth now instead of right. Wild Pyromancers, the Token Druid is also very nice against the, uh, the Shadowwalk Shaman. So for Bozo, losing his sweeper deck, as I'm sure he will have seen it, is a pretty big blow right at the start of the series. So what's the counter pick then, Derek? What do you think? Does he go with the Paladin? Does he go with the Mirror Match, the Hunter? I think you can probably take the Paladin. Uh, it's not anywhere near, in my opinion, as good a matchup as Odd Paladin is against Death Rattle Hunter, for which they just go too wide early on. They yep. just uh, swamp the board early on, and then you get level up, and you pretty much just tend to lose. Uh, cards like Flanking Strike become significantly more powerful in this matchup. As we can see here, he is going for the even Paladin, uh, because it doesn't go as wide on the board. You rely on mid-range strategies, sticking a Corpse Taker, uh, sticking a Armani Berserker, if you will, um, I don't know why I said, if you will, that's what the card is called. Um, but it relies on small minions, uh, you making them, buffing them up, instead of a super wide board of small minions. Which Hunter can deal we with have better. turned our curse into our strength. Especially when they get a fairly nice little hand like this once again. Zixo is just an egg away from a very nice starting hand indeed. He is, however, still an egg away from a very nice starting hand. Yeah. And that, that could cause him a problem. Like, he's got the flanking strike, but he's not got Hellmaster Shaw. He's not got anything really to play at all. Yeah. And I, I wonder in this matchup who sees themselves as being in the lead 
uh, as the game progresses. Because obviously if Zixo can find uh, a big cube play dead turn or if he can draw Katharina, I think we can agree he'll probably be in the lead, which means stalling is fine. He's right. happy with just stalling for the moment. But if he doesn't get any of those cards and Pozo goes for something like Coin Corpse Taker oh, so into good, Blessing though, of Things, it? Zixo is going to be starting oh. to feel pretty rough indeed. I feel a little bit weak at the knees there, Darren, with the second Blessing of Kings picked up there. Yeah. That, it's tough to play it, though, from Bozo because he knows Coin Corpse Taker is very weak to exactly flanking strike because the, the candle shot is already <laughs> equipped. So does he spend a turn playing the Noble Sacrifice first to protect? His Corpse Taker. He doesn't want to take the risk. This is again from Bozo. Um, a risky play that could have huge well, look, benefits. Worst case scenario, worst case scenario is it gets flanking strikes and then you just blessing the King of the Hydrologist. Yes. You've got a 6-6 six, six on the Um But yeah, it's been played now, but Corpse Taker, this deck does run Crystal Smith Kangol for the Life Steal. It's got Wind Fury Harpy for the, well, Wind Fury, and it's got Tyrion for everything else. So everything you could possibly want for Corpse Taker is comfortably in this deck. And, I mean, I mean honestly, Bozo doesn't really have any other options here. Hero Power Pyromancer is, like, the only other play available to him, really. Well, like, no, I was looking at Pyromancer's secret, because then you can trade in the wolf and your pyromancer is technically protected from the candle shop because of the noble sacrifice. Okay. Uh, is worth considering. Options, um, options. Yeah, it still dies to like Zilliax that your opponent could play on turn five. But then the, the Blessing of Kings is also weak to uh, exactly Zilliax on the following turn. Three damage ah, kills it off. It's weak to a second candle <laughs> shot. Both of these plays are weak to pretty much everything that Zixo is looking to do on turn five. He's going to have to go with it, though. It's, ju it's just... Yeah, yeah. Taking all of that aside, it's just the strongest play available to him right now. Yes. So it's the play he's going to go for. Unfortunately, though, flanking strike in the hand, Hunter's Mark in the hand, whatever Zixo wants to do to get rid of this. And... Oh, he's even got um, the spider bomb played in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a multitude of options, whatever he wants to go for. Um, and I, I like the slow play there from Bozo. I think that was worth considering. But when you look at both uh, Pyromancer into Secret or... Um, the Blessing of Kings, they're both weak to the same thing. So what gives you the bigger benefit and the benefit of Blessing of Kings is six damage to face, which could be relevant. Maybe you can go for an aggressive plan later on. True Silver Champion, very healthy draw for Bozo there, given how lackluster his hand was looking. Gonna just dismantle the Spider Bomb. Next turn, I guess he can pay, play Gen Greymane. Great. That, yeah. it, it's something. He needs to start getting the power draws because when even Paladin falls... Well, when even Paladin falls massively behind, it obviously has a quality Consecrate or a quality Pyromancer. When it's in this kind of state where it's definitely not worth going for a big board sweeping clear, but you're still definitely not winning the board, that's when it starts to feel like a bit of a, a, a funky deck. Like, it, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And you're just not pushing enough damage. And here with the Hunter chipping away, turn after turn after turn, eventually Zixo's going to draw Katharina or Rexar, and they're just he's going to win. Oof. Especially when you have cards like Wind Fury Harpy in your deck. I mean, it costs six mana. It's turn six. If, if, if not for Zixo's <laughs> board, he'd probably just slam it. Wind Fury Harpy into the Blessing of King Actions. sitting in the hand. Seems good. But no, it just dies. Oh, so easily right now. Zixo has, although his his hand, again, it was so weak at the start of this game, he's managed to put these little tools together and he just, he's got control of the board. Bozo can't do anything. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call Zixo's hand so weak. It, it's done what it looked like it was going to do at the start of the game. It's it's cleared the board because he had candle shot, flanking strike. He drew another flanking strike, another candle shot. He hasn't dominated the board. He's just kept everything clear. Sure. But he's, he's keeping it clear to the point where Bozo can't actually develop anything. Yes. <laughs> and the fact that he has an extra flanking strike in his hand, he has the, the Hunter's Mark still, it's, it leaves him in a, in a very good position. Bozo's looking like he, he might be considering just clearing everything this turn with the Consecration and then hitting it with the weapon. Okay. Sure, sure. This develops a better board, still deals with most of Six's things. 
that flanky stripe still annihilates him, though. Yeah. Or the Hunter's Mark, whatever Zixo wants yeah. to go for here. And oh, tracking as well. Finally. I mean, he okay. can start finding some of his good cards. And he just keeps pushing damage through to face. Without Crystal Smith Kangor, Bozo has basically no healing in the deck, and he's just going to die. He just, just takes Take another track tracking. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. He, ne he needs, like you said, he needs the power plays. Just anything big. But mostly that. There we go. Mostly that on the yeah. right, yeah. That's. Yeah. <laughs> You do need to be worried about value up against an even Paladin. They can go for pretty long into the late game, I find, uh, especially if they're running cards like Tyrion Fordring with the Lich King, uh, which Bozo has opted to bring. And when Valonir gets drawn, obviously, oh, good point. everything gets that little bit stronger for the Paladin, especially if they can do something ridiculous like Valonir into a Saranite Chain Gang. <laughs> Though Bozo missing all of those cards, missing Tyrion, missing the Lich King, missing anything big himself, Quite a slow game on both sides. It has indeed. And so now that Bozo has decisively lost the early game, he needs to wonder, what is my right. win condition? How do I wrestle this game back? Harpy, let's go. <laughs> Harpy, he can put down the Noble Sacrifice to try and protect it, and then he can maybe spike with Steed it next turn. And then it's a six attack win for him, Minion. It's the best he's Why got not? right now. It's an incredibly hopeful play. It's very <laughs> optimistic, but it could just work out. Um, we can see there is actually an answer to that in attacking in with the weapon first. Obviously, this is assuming it's Noble Sacrifice, which Zixo doesn't have any indication that it is. Um, and then you could trade in and then go Deathstalker Rexar. So if, if he attacks in with the weapon first and it ends up being Redemption, then that is a problem. So I guess you just go Hunter's Mark? Hunter's Mark, then attack in with the weapon, yeah. Well, you could just go Hunter's Mark um, Rexar. Because then if it's Redemption, you, it pops back up and you hit it. And he can still play the Hunter's Mark now. Still solves yeah, I guess the problem. He can play Rek'Sai, he doesn't even need to hit him with the weapon anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess if it wasn't get down, then this was better. It's uh, it's difficult to not be results oriented with secrets because obviously we can see yeah, this wasn't the best way to do it. It's difficult for us. It's difficult for the players to yeah. work out like what yeah. is the best sequence of events in all circumstances. As Bozo gets a good draw here, Tyrion gonna slam that straight down. Yeah. And actually, for the first time, Zixo can't deal with it. He is. Behind on board, it would seem, finally. No spider bombs left, as I believe the second one was discarded off of a tracking as well. Never mind. He does, however, have that button that he can just press. And when you press that button, you tend to win games of Hearthstone. <laughs> I mean, even even if this whiffs, he can go Hellmaster Shaw, play the Terrascale Stalker, mm -hmm. and just double trade. So he can actually deal with Tyrion regardless. So that was bloat back plus Poisonous and Rush cool. uh, that has now just been gained. He could go for Stone Skin Basilisk with the Bloat Bat, which leaves him with a seven mana beast that he could then go uh, seven mana Zombeast plus Terra Scale Stalker to get a Poisonous two damage to everything effect, okay. uh, which I think he's looked at now. He's, I think he was going to snap Valbrood Skitterer because that's generally the better option. Yep. Um, but getting a Divine Shield Poisonous Death Rattle deal two damage to everything that stays alive on the turn it's played yep. is pretty disgusting, and I agree that's the way to go. Does he play it this turn though? Or I don't, I don't think so. Right? You just you attack in with the weapon, and the next turn you go yep. Zombeast into Terrascale. It's, it's such a clean cut way of clearing the board. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. just feels awkward to just float seven mana now after just building a beast. And not only does it feel awkward. It's an incredibly suspicious play. <laughs> like, Bozo is going to be wondering, what is this Bozo thinking? Is that what Bozo thinks? It's just like the word Bozo for everyone. Yeah, yeah. That was, well, <laughs> that was kind of ambiguous. It to be, what is this Bozo thinking as to Zixo? Or he refers to himself in the third person in his thoughts. Options, ah. options. That's very complicated. <laughs> it's a very complicated joke that doesn't make much sense, I agree. I feel like I've been next leveled a few times. You have. This curse has become our greatest secret. And here it is, the big develop onto the board from Bozo, thinking even if he, d you know, if he does have some big way to pull back onto the board, I'm losing anyway. He has fallen into Zixo's trap, and now it is being sprung. And look at Bozo there. He knows he's just been got. 
He got Zixo. And the crazy thing is, it's still there. It's still yeah, the fine shield. It's, oh man. It's still How dealing with that? at least two more minions. Yeah. So again. Actually, it's not. <laughs> well, yeah, he has to spend his like a good amount of his mana this turn just cleaning it up, still taking a whole bunch of damage. Zixo has incredibly powerful follow-up now with the crackling uh sorry, the charge devil saw and still that hero power, yep. which will keep on plugging away. Oh great, a cube as well. No nothing to activate it with this turn, but still. I think what most likely happens this turn uh, is the hero power for Zixo and then follow up with Charge Devil Sword because if that survives, you can then go cube, hope to draw a play dead, uh, play dead or a terror scale activator to get it rolling. And it's, it, it is worth pointing out for Bozo that he could have played around what happened to an extent by going for Spike Ridge Steed. Uh, instead of the, the Gen Grey main. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this is a devastating combo oh, of piece. <laughs> Just 10 mana, two cave, cave hydras, both with rush. Yeah, yeah this, this, this game is well and truly over by the looks of things. As Zixo is going to be knocking out Bozo's second deck with only his Death Rattle Hunter, as there is the Valoneer picked up too late. Uh, it, it's not over, over yet. He's still got Spike Ridge Seed, which is one hell of a card. He's still got Sunkeeper Tarim, arguably the best card in the game. Still feels quite over from it, where I'm Yeah, it, it, it's not looking great. I will agree with you. But if, what, you kill off the Charge Devil Saw, that means cube play dead possibilities are over. And then Hero Power Spike Ridge Steed. They don't have the okay. Steady Shot Hero Power anymore, so you're not dying through the Torn. Yep, you're right. It's it's reasonable, and putting up the spike which seed is is obviously options, important this turn. Options. It's not great. And the uh, the cave hydra kind of cleave effect will not come into play uh, right now. Obviously, with only one minion available and no more spider bombs, no more hunters marks available for Zix. So having used them very aggressively towards the start of the game means that this spike which seed is a little bit annoying to get through. I'm just staring at this hand, trying to find a lethal somewhere, but I, I don't think there is one just yet. I like, Mossy Horror is just a little bit too expensive to be played alongside anything else, because that could have dealt with the mm. uh, Stegadon itself. Obviously, Zixo can press the button and potentially just get a Life Drinker or something, win the game immediately. Like, he, he can just go double uh, Cave Hydra here, uh -huh. which clears off the board, because I believe they both have four attack. Um, I won. Oh, no, sorry, it'd be one damage off clearing the board. Mm. It, it's still just a very powerful play onto the board into which your opponent can develop nothing True. because your whole board just gets swept by that uh, wide board clearing effect. And yeah, that's what Zixo's going for here. I like it. This is not the time where you have to go for value because you are so clearly ahead in the value race. You have to push your advantage, which is the fact that your opponent has pretty much just died. However, now is going to be the chance, I guess, for Sunky Patarim to make that little bit of a swing <laughs> that it can. He's got the hero power, he's got the use, slam him onto the board, makes him three threes. <laughs> I think Zixo's face just about says it. He knows that this game is over he looks bored. the vast majority of the time. Zixo <laughs> always looks bored. Raposo just looks... A little bit lost. Yeah. Lost is the word. Well, uh, like we saw the Ejected. emotion from him earlier on when he lost to the the bloat bat uh, terror scale stalker play. That's what just locked this game out for him. Still doesn't seem to be a lethal set up <laughs> how Master Shaw somehow. <laughs> We're both just looking at it there. Uh, Zixo, you... just press the button, get a life drinker. Come on. <laughs> wait, no, no, no. If you... Oh, no, no, there is there lethal, is? right? If you go Devil Saw Egg, Houndmaster Master... Oh, no, wait, no, no, no. Sorry, you can't play the, the cube as well. No. Um, yeah, like, I guess you just push the button. Or you can go cube into Houndmaster Shaw. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This makes sense. Clear up the board. And still, a Spike Ridge Seed or a Lich King has to be found yeah, I mean, right now for there to be any chance at all for uh, 
No, it's not good enough. The that Masi is not good the enough. The Masi Aralan. I was going to say, the one thing Chorus said to us about <laughs> this deck earlier on is that it doesn't draw cards. It does not draw cards. Oh, I agree. Uh, and it really has not done the job here at all for Bozo. It was a valiant effort, to be sure. But falling 0-2 now to Zixo, whose Death Rattle Hunter here is just doing amazing work against these decks that are trying to aggro you down early on. The Token Druid, the most aggressive of the Druids, being dealt with very handily. And now with the Even Paladin going down as well. Like I said, the fact that it's not Odd Paladin means that it's weak to Spider Bomb, to play uh, to the Flanking Strike. All right. these single target removal spells become significantly more powerful against the Even Paladin. And because of that, and that incredibly explosive and ingenious turn from Zixo to go for the Bloat Bat plus the Stone Skin, he's left with only his own Death Rattle Hunter, Hunter up against three of Zixo's decks. He has to reverse sweep. And. It's not going to be an easy task here. It is not. Given that the first deck he has to play with is the one that he deemed the worst of the two matchups between the Even Paladin and the Death Rider Hunter, he has to beat Zixo in the mirror. So I'm just now going to stare at these two deck lists and try and notice if there's anything different. Yes, Bozo actually has a high main rather than a charged Devil Saw. Is that it? Pretty close outside of that. Yeah, yep. that's pretty much Identical. it. Just very yep. standard deck list. Nothing too fancy going on here. Death Auto Hunter has pretty much been refined to the point of uh, completion. Oh, there's a lot of bombs. Yeah. It's an interesting hand. It, it's explosive, to be sure, but that's not that bad of a starting hand. Like, obviously, if they have an egg, the spider bomb can get a little bit messy because you start blowing up their eggs and then they get five fives that just attack straight away and you take a lot of damage. But in a lot of other outcomes where they try and go for a Witchwood Grizzly start to just blow the game out, or even if they just get a 3-3 three, three off a flanking strike, these spider bombs can keep the board very firmly in your favor at the start of the game. Wow. It's like they're throwing away everything other than the tracking, though. Yeah. What do you think eggs. Eggs? I was going, okay. Yeah, eggs and Kelliseth. Oh, this hand seems good. <laughs> yeah. no, no eggs, but I think you're happy with that. It, oh, man, if he gets an egg with his hand, it's going to be so disgustingly powerful. How's about a King Crush? Less, less good. No. Yeah. Devil Soul? No? Less good. In, in the objective scale of everything in the universe, egg is a lot higher than Crush. Oh, oh, God, he wants that egg so badly. <laughs> and next turn would still be fine. Egg, coin, played it into Terra Scale the following turn is, is great. Oh. oh, Bozo got there. He got the egg. Zixo looking across the board, pining after his opponent's <laughs> egg, wishing that it was his, because that is the key to the early game in this matchup. If you can get yourself an egg early on, those Devil Souls will just run away with the game, especially because Zixo does not have spider bombs of his own in response. He threw one away off the mulligan, which I agree with. You want to look for your own early game a little bit more aggressively. But now Bozo is looking like he's going to start running away with the early game. So what does Zixo do to mitigate that? Because as far as I can tell, he has a few options available to him. The one I'm looking at is actually just drop the three mana 4-4. Four four. Yeah. Play the mind control tech, the biggest minion onto the board you possibly can. It, it's it's like it's it's damage management. Yeah. How bad do you think your opponent's next turn is going to be? If they go, if you think they have Terra Scale Play Dead in hand, obviously you save the Terra, uh, you save the Mind Control Tech because you're you're never beating that without a steal of a five five. Zixo is saying it's unlikely you have that, and I think this is the mark of a strong tournament player as opposed to a somewhat less well-known player like we saw from Bozo. Okay. Like in the first game when he was saying, oh, I don't want to push for lethal, maybe he has a cube into double play dead for lethal. That could happen. Usually that doesn't happen. Zixo's realizing it's very unlikely he has the ability to make four minions on the board. So let's just play the four form. Let's just get it out there because this usually is the better play. And like you said, I think damage management is a great way of putting it. Like clearly Bozo is about to do something with that egg. May as well put as much power onto the board as you possibly can now and deal with that. The, the good thing Zixo does have going on for him is that he does have the cube and the play dead later on. So if he can get one, 
even medium-sized minion to stick, then he's going to be in a great position. That candle shot, not a bad draw, actually, with the 4-4 uh, four, four and the candle shot dealing with the Devil Saw, and then Kelaseth just straight trading into the Spider Bomb. Yeah, that's really not that bad. And he, oh man, he is just one draw away from having a really, really powerful hand. If he was to get an egg, spider, even a grizzly, if he can get a witchwood grizzly that sticks for a turn and then goes cube play dead, that's probably just game right there. I am surprised by that play. Wow. Okay, so he was obviously hoping that the Mike Trot takes the fire, so he gets three threes from this cube. But... Yes. That's very different from what I was looking at. The 4-6 plus the candle shot trade, value trades into the 5-5, five five, I guess? It's, it's pretty strong positives and negatives of either play. Your one obviously is a tidier play. It deals with the board more effectively, so you're taking less face damage. You need to be less worried about uh, the, aggressive, the aggressive output from your opponent. Yeah. But Zixo's play is more proactive. I think he's yeah. uh, realizing that this hand at the moment needs a death rattle card on the board. And Cube is that card. If you can get these Terror Scales to summon two two twos every time, that's fine. Then Bozo is Deathstalker Rex, so is going to have a great day. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> no, no, I, I know what you mean. I agree. Like, he has to do something with these Terror Scale Stalkers. Yeah. Obviously, if he draws a spider or an egg, that becomes easy, but he can't go all in on that plan. I think oh. this is usually the more effective way to go about it. This Cube is basically a Savannah High Main. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Except it summons Kelasets <laughs> and it's made of slime. <laughs> Similar enough to me. Like Savannah Slime. <laughs> and there we go. This is the plan he was moving towards. Just get a big old board and pray that he doesn't oh, have Deathstalker Rexar to wow. be able to deal with everything here. And man, oh man. This is going to be one of the stronger Rexars that I've ever seen. Oof. Yeah, this oh. is what's coming. This is like a Hearthstone player's dream. Look at all the Kelasets dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was therapeutic, I think, <laughs> for everyone watching. And there it is. The the Spider Bomb is a very, very important pickup for Zixo, because otherwise his hand was doing basically nothing. Oh, perfect. Gets a, a very nice roll there as well. So he is now ahead on board. Amazing. Somehow, after those ridiculous plays from Bozo, but card advantage in Bozo's favor, even ignoring the Builder Beast hero power, which is going to be incredibly relevant yep. in pulling Bozo ahead. This does show the downside of cubing the egg, though. It's that Bozo's run out of Death Rattle activators now. He just drew a flanking strike, but he'd prefer to play that on an opponent's guard. In fact, he can flanking strike the Spider Bomb. Yeah. Spider Bomb can crack the egg open, so that's something. I think what he was thinking there is, do I play another egg before flanking strike to increase the odds of an egg dying rather than the right. wolf dying? Or do I press the hero power uh, and I agree you should press the hero power. A two out of three for a good outcome uh, is good enough, especially because getting those Builder Beasts rolling, I think it's pretty important here when the rest of your hand doesn't do all too much. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, it did not work out for him in this instance. And he has a five mana, what's that, a three three? A five mana three three silence poisonous taunt. <laughs> One of the more peculiar Builder Beasts. And Zixo's sort of just throwing everything he's got at Bozo now, hoping that Bozo can't generate a big board quickly enough. But with that Hellmaster Shore draw, uh, Bozo's looking very healthy. Oh, the fact that you can rush in the Spider Bomb. Yeah. So nuts. Even being able to fit in the Hunter's Mark, I suppose, if you're not feeling especially lucky. Just Hunter's Mark, the, the Shore, and then yeah. you kill off two minions. Yeah, this works out absolutely gorgeously. It comes down to, from Bozo's side, pretty much just praying that Kathrina isn't available for Zixo. Uh, because if it is, then he's in a pretty rough spot. <laughs> However, it's Unplayable pretty card. much the worst draw that oh. Zixo could have got. Wow. It looks like, it's starting to look like, Zixo's sweep is coming to an end. Yeah, he needed something much more powerful than this after he lost the early game as a, a taste of his own poisonous medicine uh, comes in here for Zixo with the exploding boat bat picked up for Bozo. Could, could this be the beginning of a reverse sweep? Yes, is the answer to that. It could be. Will it be, is the question. <laughs> to that, I do not know. <laughs> 
Oh, then again, with King Crush and the weapon, able to nicely clean up this board. Oh. Again, these eggs are doing nothing. I guess it's not actually over now. Well, it's not now. The Rex are yeah. Over. Rex are <laughs> like we know what zombies can do. If Bozo rolls very poor zombies, which so far he kind of <laughs> has on. been doing. Blowback plus play dead though. <laughs> that that is not a poisonous one. That oh, is okay. that is a, a three three taunt. I think I think it got an iron fur grizzly on there. Okay. So it only does two damage to everything. I think. A six mana two four. Wow, these these minions are. Uh... How level in Hearthstone has gone down, hasn't it? <laughs> it's got poisonous and rush. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No question here as to what the play is. Zixo. Now, I guess now is a true test of Zixo's skill in Hearthstone. Can he outbuild a beast, Bozo? It's not easy to do, uh, but if anyone can do it. I think it's six oh because building zombies is a very skill testing yeah. aspect of Hearthstone. I absolutely love the Builder Beast hero power. Um oh, just because you always have to know what the options you're going for are what are the optimal outcomes. Already something has maybe even gone wrong for Zixo here is he could have played a cheap Builder Beast rather than using the first hero power this turn. Obviously you use the first hero power because yeah. you, you don't expect to get beasts this cheap. But hey, he could have had a Stone Tusk Ball play this turn. And even if he could have had that, I don't think he necessarily would have done that because sure. he wanted to get the most expensive one he could because his hand doesn't do anything. He needs to yeah. fill out his mana with those big old beasties. Now Bozo just going to be as aggressive as he possibly can. And hey, 7-7 seven, oh. seven, seven oh. Stealth Wind Fury is pretty aggressive. But there's Katharina. Wait, hang on. Is it just one which would I, I think left? so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, because... Charge Devil Saw? No, it was tracking the way. Oh, OK. It, yeah. yeah. If, if I remember rightly, there's one Witch of Grizzly in the deck, and that's it. Which is fine. It's not great against the 7-7 seven, seven Wind Fury. What's this? I mean, it, this, this, oh board, this board this board trade <laughs> with the seven seven wind fury. Yeah, and that is that is the best outcome. That is what you're praying happens here. Nothing else untoward occurs. Um, obviously, uh, that zombie I believe does not have. Uh, sorry, the bloat bat does not have poisonous attached, so it will not be able to effectively deal with all of these beasts from Zixo. But it still is just very firmly boz uh, bozo in the lead. Like, he doesn't even have to trade in the, with the Wind Fury effect. He can uh, attack in once with the Wind Fury and then Devil Saw plus Flanking Strike the other one. Yeah, or some and combination of Ziliax, some, or some there. hero yeah. power thing. Oh my goodness. Oh. That 7-7 seven, seven is about to get even bigger. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh. Take the Poisonous as well. The Skitter that's, as that's well. That's just a that's free insane. kill. insane. Maybe you put a Divine Shield or some help or yeah, attack like, on this thing? <laughs> well, I said Zixo might be able to out zombies his opponent. <laughs> um, this is not how it occurs. He actually targeted the Devil Saw there, okay. Oh, I guess because if he gets plus attack, then that's even better than getting plus attack on the Wind Fury. Is it? Well, yeah, because on the Devil Saw, if you get plus attack or um, poisonous, then you get to connect 14 oh, phase rather sure, than sure, 7. Sure. I think that's the right way to okay. go about it. As Zixo wondering, what on earth could it? help me here? Tundra Rhino, maybe I can charge something, and we I've... can see it's pretty much lights out, and Bozo will be taking at least one game, putting something on the board. Like, if he drew exactly played at this turn and managed to get the Poisonous Blow back, which he could play even then the Devil Saw survives, I think there was literally nothing yeah. that Zixo could do, as Bozo does take his first game of the series. Wow, okay. We have a game going on here, Darren. We do indeed, as the two remaining matchups for Bozo that he has to win once again with his Death Rattle Hunter in both of them. It's Shadowwalk Shaman and Mali Goss Druid. Not the worst matchups. They're not bad, but I've had a really interesting relationship with both of these exact matchups, actually, where I originally thought Death Rattle Hunter was by far the favorite in both of them. Mm -hmm. But having played it a little bit and especially talking to pro players, I'm getting some very mixed opinions about it. Like with 
Uh, Shadowok Shaman in particular, I know uh, Hunter Ace and Muzzy are both players who have been feeling pretty good about Shadowok Shaman in tournament play recently, okay. uh, saying it's not that bad of a matchup. In death, uh, the Shadowok Shaman, if they go for a big cube or high main play, you've always got Hex, Earthshock, Volcano, so many removal options. And then once you get to your ultimate win condition, they do not stand a chance. Shadowwalk Shaman is, is such a strange deck. Just its history within Hearthstone, its brief history within Hearthstone has been like, it was played day one a lot, then everyone thought it was bad, then it became good, and now it's just sort of solidified itself as, as like a, a good tier two deck. Yeah, I agree. I think if it's piloted by the best of the best as well, like the players who are really acolytes of it, like um, Language Hacker in particular, who I know has been playing a lot of Shadowwalk Shaman, I think it is very easily a tier one deck because it just has good matchups against okay. everything if you're, oh, not everything, but a lot of the decks if you're playing it correctly. So Zixos actually has Hemet in it, which definitely isn't something I consider popular nowadays. It had, it had its time. Yeah, well, like the, the thing people say about Hemet in Shadowwalk Shaman is it's only good in the mirror. That's, that's like the criticism that people have of it, uh, which is obviously not true. That's an over uh, oversimplification yeah. of its spot in the meta. That's where it shines the most, and it is incredibly important in the mirror. What it leaves you weak to, however, is the fact that mid-range decks can all of a sudden aggro you down after you play a Hemet. Right. Uh, for example, like Death Rattle Hunter is a perfect example. If you play the Hemet and you lose Healing Rains, uh, you lose Earth Shocks, all of a sudden, they're just going to start killing you. They're going to go Q, play dead uh, on whatever minion they can, and your responses become very limited indeed. Yeah, it's the fact that Hemet's remove cards, like, as you said, like the Healing Rain, like the far sights, like these Lightning Storms, the little cheaper cards, like Glacial Shards even, mm -hmm. that can make a big impact. Earth Shocks on cubes and things. But for the moment, this is... As expected, a pretty uneventful early game for both sides. Neither deck does all too much between uh, turns one and four. Now is when things start to get a little bit more interesting. As To Hex or not to Hex? Yeah, Sixo has two very, very different diverging lines here. Wow. He could have considered going for Chain Gang on this turn, Chain Gang on the next turn even, and then Lightning Storm, because he will hope that the Howlmaster Shaw will have been damaged and weakened enough to the point where it will die to a Lightning Storm. However, he's saying, I don't want that. I don't want to send out my chain gangs as lambs to the slaughter. Yeah. I want to actually be able to lock down the board with these, yeah. which it's looking like he will actually very easily be able to I mean, do. With both chain gangs and also Grumble in his hand, he must be tempted to just hold on to them and try and get some sort of... Also a good point. Also a good point. Especially with Hagatha as well. Like there's, there's a potential for him to generate a lot of value very quickly yeah. with the combination of cards in his hand. It just occurred to me that last turn, Derek, that, oh yeah, Zixo is the fast player, isn't he? <laughs> He is the quick boy. Yeah, because that, that snap pick on the Hex there yeah. was a um, very fast play. I hadn't noticed so far this series. It's been fairly complicated games. I've agreed with most of what he's been going for. Uh, but yeah, he is he's up there in uh, the speed department, along with Casey, I think, who may have taken the, the crown in recent <laughs> tournaments as the fastest player. Good. I wouldn't mind having some more of those. <laughs> I wonder... Got someone you'd rather be, Dan? You're not enjoying my stellar company. No, no. Your company is great, Derek. But after a three-hour Shadowwalk Shaman Dead Man's Hand, <laughs> I'm not so sure I'll be feeling the same way. That is a fair point. But if Casey and Zixo are piloting them, maybe not. It'd be like a five-minute game. <laughs> You'd reach turn 45 after 15 minutes. <laughs> As still, because of Zixo's uh, decision to go for uh, the Hex there to deal with the Howlmaster Shaw, this is just going to be going tip for tap for the next few turns. It means that Bozo's plays become significantly weaker um, for the moment. It does mean that because that Hex was used, Bozo's plays will become more powerful later on. There's no response to a cube or a high main or a Kathrina. But for the moment, at least, Zixo has made himself so that he is not dying to early aggro, which is a very valid thing to be afraid of. This is a board clear for Bozo, though, with the... Um not even having to use the candle shot with just the minion and the Rexar. It's slightly annoying physics, so probably not the end of the world because Bozo isn't developing a board of his own anyway. Now Zixo can actually just go Saranite Chain Gang Zola if he wants to and then steps up for the Grumble next turn. 
Yeah, I, mm, I don't know. I, I, I always like looking at Cube quite creatively in this matchup because one of the ways I find that Hunter loses is when you save Cube too greedily for a big old turn where you go for, uh, I don't know, Cube on a, a Witchwood Grizzly or whatever, uh, Devil Saw, and then you go double play dead or uh, double uh, death rattle activator and you lose to mind control tech. That's one of the big swings in this matchup, I find, is that the mind control tech is so powerful for Shutterwalk Shaman. So they're going for, you know, a cube on the the spider bomb. I don't think it was correct. I think this was probably the better way to it go. It was worth considering. But definitely worth considering yeah. because that cube is then just very annoying for Zixo to deal with unless he's got an earth shock. Especially given that one of the hexes has already been Exactly, played. exactly. That's why I like aggressive use of carnivorous cube from here on in. But then there's nothing stopping Bozo from just making one big minion from this Builder Beast. Wow, like a 10 mana corpse taker. <laughs> Tiger thing, which then also discounts the cube, and then doing some really disgusting things. That's true. Can't that play sticks it for around. Two turns, that would be but... pretty disgusting. That's like a reckless experiment all of a sudden. Well, yeah. But without the minion but, dying. But nothing like that. It's it's like a corpse widow, actually. One might say. Yeah, and also like a stranglethorn tiger. <laughs> Agreed. Free me. As this looks to oh, be a goodness. pretty easy grumble turn. Uh, for Zixo. Ah, it's awkward though, because now Zola's back in his hand. As the Shadowhawk Shaman, you don't really want to play more Zolas than you have to, because every time your Zola goes off before a Grumble, that's a nine mana Shadowhawk that's being put back in your hand. That's fair, but given that he hasn't played Hagatha yet, hand size is not that much of an issue. Okay. Uh, and because he could also go for <laughs> Zola on a Grumble and then Grumble back his Zola and just start going. Or grumble back his grumble. Okay, so so that's when things start to get pretty absurd. So Shadowwalk is never ever 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 going to whiff if you do that. But you, no, again, never ever ever. But is, you might die to King Crush. And the, true. And there's also the issue that you could end up with just a handful of nine mana Shadowwalks. Yes. So the plate here could be Zola, one of these minions. I'm not actually sure if it's correct to go for the Chain Gang or the Grumble. He needs to not die. Then trade in the Grumble into the King Crush and then just hex the Kathrina. Yeah. Like, it deals with the board. You get down your Zola. You could even go Zola the Chain Gang, play another Chain Gang, hex, and then trade in the Grumble. <laughs> yeah, he's not really thinking about Shadow Walk at all. At the moment. He's thinking about surviving. That sequence had to happen. Yeah, Looks okay. like he's not going to play the Zola, just going to put all of these Sound Knights on the board. So oh. This is the, the other use of Zola that you can consider of, which, which is the, the more standard route, I should note, Hold of back, saving though. it. Exactly, yeah. You go for the Shudderwalk. If it fails, you play the one mana Zola. I wouldn't have hated going for something like, uh, actually, like oh. Zolaing back another Grumble. Maybe that's just like fancy play syndrome. Like, I'm just getting too fancy there. It's quite fancy. Exactly. I should just be sticking with the tried and true tested route, which Zixo is going for, of just saving it back. The the nice thing about Zixo's hand here, though, is that if he feels himself safe next turn, he's still got high health total. He's got three taunts on the board. As long as Bozo doesn't do something completely absurd, Zixo could go hem it, far sight, and just start to really dig that's for true. that shadow work. Far sight becomes a lot better after hem it. I agree. Because what's it drawing? Like, there's not even many options in Zixo's deck. It's drawing Shadow Walk or Volcano. Or that Shadow Walk or Volcano. Wow. That's it. Oh, and the other far side as well is a pretty big old draw so for Zixo. Yeah, if he does this now, it leaves him with three cards in his deck, I believe. Four. Oh, what have I missed? Oh, another life drinker. Right, right, right. So you got the volcano. So next turn, he will get one natural draw, and then he'll get a far sight, which means there'll be one card left in his deck. So he should. So be able two to out of three times he can play Shutter Rock yeah. next turn, which would already potentially have the ability to just win the game because he has played a life drink already. Exactly. And there it is. He's not played a shard though, I believe. Well, the shards are gone because yeah. of Grumble. Well, yeah, so that's... that's Right, so you're you're saying he might be afraid of dying. That is a 9-11 stealth sitting there. Yeah, but he can trade in the Grumble first... Uh, sorry, the <laughs> Hemet first. Like, if that 9-11 gets Wind Fury, if... <laughs> it's like, I agree that Zixo should be cautious here because he is so likely to win the game now. 
but I think giving your opponent more turns is more likely to lead to a loss than just going for it now, because, I mean, oh, look how many Saranite Chain Gangs he has to bounce back to his hand. He only, he only got two... Uh... Two one mana shadow walks though, which is which is fine. I think that's probably fine. <laughs> now, now he's only got one. Okay. And this is this is yeah. the issue I was talking about earlier with the uh. but This is what can happen, even if your hand looks like you're not having any issues with it. Next turn, so Zixo will start by playing the one mana one. If that one goes wrong, he can play a nine mana one, and then that's it for the turn. I think he's still winning there, right? I, I, I agree. Think so too. I, I, I think agree. So too. This couldn't have gone much worse. Like the worst outcome is he would have to have gone Zola on that turn, right? Um, which was very, very unlikely, considering there were four or five chain gangs that had been played. Um, I think he's still very, very likely yeah. to be winning this game. But there are slim chances that if the battle cries go in exactly the wrong order, well, he's still in a good position. But the issue is that nine eleven is still there. Like Zixo kind of has to win this turn. So the last card in his oh, the last cards in his deck, volcanoes. The it's last just card volcano. Is volcano, yeah. yeah. Like if there was if there was a way for him to clear up this nine eleven, even yeah, he's he's gonna start with a lightning storm. It also empties his hand a little bit more, means that the shadow walk is more likely yeah, to yeah, put yeah. a one mana card in. Never mind. <laughs> Oh, went off first. Oh, that what? means Sammy Zola will be putting a nine mana Shadow Walk in the hand. But he, like, if he plays a nine mana Shadow Walk now, he, he loses. Well, no, he goes back up to twenty-seven. He's still alive, right? Like, he's not dying. He's alive, but it's getting it's getting risky here. Like, there are a lot of pure <laughs> beasts that could just end him. So. Now, it, like he can go for another Shadow Walk on this turn, which heals him up more and almost guarantees him a one mana Shadow Walk to hand, but not necessarily. Oh no, it doesn't even almost it guarantee. Doesn't. It's a fifty fifty. So it goes off. It's, a, it's just a fifty fifty. Oh this, my god! And this is one of the issues with with Zola's in this deck. He's got a totem, trying to get a taunt totem. I guess if he plays a Lightning Storm now, he can't play Shadow Walk next turn. What a desperate last what? moment play from Zixo, and it's gone horribly wrong. What? Nothing actually gets killed off here. Zixo. What was that play? Clearly not happy with his own decision making there. He just uh, he just killed off the eggs and turned them into five fives. <laughs> <laughs> what? Zixo just gonna concede from that immediately. Oh boy. That was just a panic from Zixo. Yeah. He just didn't know what to do there. <laughs> Look at Bozo's face. He can't believe it. <laughs> I have never seen a game like that. <laughs> well, Whew. the score is 2-2. We are going into the last game. And <laughs> to Zixo's credit, I'm, I'm not trying to make fun of him here. That was an incredibly difficult series of turns yeah. there. Oh, I, yeah. I very much doubt either of us could have found the perfect line there. That he is got one very for, unlucky. Yeah, he, very he unlucky. did get very unlucky. That is one for the, the Shudderwalk gods uh, to, to figure out how he could have won that, because I absolutely believe that game was winnable uh, if it had been played correctly there. Even just not going for the double lightning storm to deliver lethal. Uh, to Bozo there, I think increased his chance. Like just taking a 50-50 with Shudderwalk, while may, uh, sorry, to get a one mana Shudderwalk back to his hand, while it may not have been the best play, I think it was a fine play. It keeps him alive more than Double Lightning Storm does. <sighs> well, okay. let's all take a breath, Zixo yeah. included. Let's all take a breath. Now, you were saying earlier that, that you think this matchup is fine for the Malikos. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I, the, 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 the counteracting, uh, the ability to counteract the Druid combo is kind of low. Like, you have Ooze to be able to deal with Twig, but that's not the be-all and end-all anymore for Druid. They still have Dream Petal Flourish. They still have Faceless, I believe, uh, if you're Zixo as well, running one Faceless Manipulator. Uh, so the, the end game combo can be quite prob uh, problematic for the hunter to deal with. But also just the early game, going coin nourish into double tyrant here is a very strong play for Zixo. Or saving them up for a big uh, spreading plague turn as well could be very powerful indeed. 
One of the issues I've always found when I've played any of the Engaging more controlly druids in this match, or any druid at all, is it's that mossy horror. It's the fact that you're never really safe when you go for that big defensive spreading play, yeah. play because it can just be mossied away. However, Bezo hasn't drawn it yet. But Zixo will be wanting to play around it a little bit as well. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is aggressive, right? If he's going for ramp, he wants to get that board locked down early. And uh, another point to Zixo's credit here is the decision to kill off the egg on the previous turn, which we were talking about uh, the, the tyrants and how we'd play those out at the time, has been so important for him here. If he was facing down two five fives as well as an egg on the last turn, uh, obviously with Bozo being able to go play dead Terra Scale on the last turn, this would be a significantly worse position for him. That, you know, it. it that's a fairly results-oriented way of looking at it because usually Bozo wouldn't have double Death Rattle activated right. in hand to be able to deal with the egg. But it's a hedge play from Zixo. He's saying, as long as I don't get blown out by five fives at the start of the game, I'm in a pretty good spot. So let's play around that. Let's just deal with that right off the bat and I should be in a good spot. Big picked up nice and early. Yeah, that's So he's going to have to take important. some damage as he starts swinging that into the Witch with Grizzly. But with with branching paths, with Ferocious Howl, mm. he's looking fine-ish. Mm. Fine-ish. Yeah. Katharina is a little bit scary. This does start to make me wonder about his use of Tyrant so early because it looked pretty good going into that board, but he's pretty good good enough. Typically, you'd expect Tyrant to be hidden behind a spreading play or with yes. an ultimate infestation for a big old swing turn later mm. on, even just to empty the hand. But like that, it removed a little bit of damage, but that's it. Because it was weak to Zilliax on that turn in combination with the candle shot. It's obviously weak to Grizzly there. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of weak to Spider Bombs plus Death Rattle activators as well. There's a, a lot that the Tyrants aren't so good against. And now this is a brilliant board for a Spreading Plague, but he's got that 4-4 lowering the amount of Scarabs he's going to be getting. This would be an amazing Spreading Plague with two Arcane Tyrants played the same yes. turn, wouldn't it? And then branching paths after. Whew. Weak to Mossy Horror, though. And again, that's the issue I was talking about before. It is scary. Like, I don't think Sixo has much of a choice here but to just yeah. not play around Mossy Horror. Especially as a, his choice to attack in with the Hero Power on that turn into the Devil Sword. Like, it, it's weak to... Pretty much, I think, exactly which would Grizzly only. Um, and, sorry, uh, it's weak, it, it was weak to Grizzly and the Spider Bomb, but both of those are not ridiculous outcomes uh, to occur on the following turn. And Zixo has just been taking a, a lot of damage this game. He cannot survive against this for much longer at all. And yet he has to get that weapon closer to being activated. He has to deal with the Witch with Grizzly too. And so now Mossy Horror off the top would be enough to just win the game for Bozo right now and complete the reverse sweep. And that looked like a Deathstalker Rexar animation to me. Oh, oh it's the Mossy! It. What? Bozo what? takes the series with a reverse oh. sweep. Zixo is just out of the client entirely. This... Oh, my God. A huge congratulations to Bozo, though, for taking that series back. He looked completely...